Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I hope the kids are close. Grab the kids. We're going to sing, This is the Day that the Lord Has Made. And you might want to decide who's going to do the lead part and who's going to do the echo part. We'll sing it twice through. Welcome to worship here today at the Piedmont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're so glad that you've joined us to worship together wherever you may be, whether it's in Lincoln, in Nebraska, in the United States, or in the world. We're glad that you have joined us for worship today. Let's pray together as we begin. Our Heavenly Father, our wonderful Lord Jesus, and blessed Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord, that you have made us with the purpose of worshiping you. We thank you for the many blessings that you've given our world. Even though our world is dealing with crisis day after day, you are still here with us, holding us and helping us. And we thank you for the blessings that we receive each day. And Lord, this weekend, we thank you for the blessing of mothers that have touched our lives, that have helped mold us and create who we are. Thank you for that amazing gift. Most of all, Lord, thank you for being interested in this world, for coming into our world to save us. Bless us now as we worship you in spirit and in truth. For we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sabbath, church family. At this time, we will have offering. Our offering this morning goes to Adventist Community Service, and at this time, we will watch a short video. When the unthinkable happens, Adventist Community Services Disaster Response is there to provide a hand, to provide help, to provide hope. Through a local network of ACS Disaster Response coordinators and volunteers across the North American Division, ACS mobilizes to provide comfort and relief to people in their times of greatest need. In the immediate aftermath of tragedy, ACS Disaster Response provides food, water, clothing, personal care items, cleaning supplies, blankets, and more through warehouses and distribution centers in communities affected by crisis events. ACS mobile distribution and shower trailers are deployed directly to disaster areas to provide relief. Many volunteers are trained to provide emotional and spiritual first aid for individuals affected by crisis. ACS also certifies volunteers in disaster assessment fortifying them to be able to determine how much response and recovery is needed following a disaster. Sheltering is a critical need post-disaster, and ACS provides the facilities and personnel to enable Adventist churches to serve their communities as public shelters. ACS, working together in partnership with ADRA, FEMA, and non-governmental organizations, provides for basic needs and assists with cleanup and rebuilding efforts to help people return to more normal living conditions. In a myriad of ways, ACS Disaster Response demonstrates Christ's love through compassion in action. ACS ministers to the whole person, 
not only in times of disaster, but in all aspects of life through ACS's family of ministries. Community development, crisis care, tutoring and mentoring, disaster response, elder care, hope for humanity, Young Adult Emergency Service Corps, or YES, and the Nonprofit Leadership Certification Program. By supporting ACS with your financial contributions and volunteering your time, you can make a lasting impact in your community and beyond. Touching one heart, one family, one community, we can transform the world. Commit to make a difference today through Adventist Community Services. You can mail your tithe and offering to the church or go to AdventistGiving.org. If you choose not to tithe online, you can drive up to the main doors at the church and find a box of tithe envelopes near the mailboxes. After you've filled it out, you can put it in the mailbox. If you rather us mail you tithe envelopes, please let us know. Let us pray for offering and tithe. God, with cheerful hearts, may we give back to you. Bless this money and multiply it so that it may aid others in need. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Today's story is going to be about love and about how to deal with embarrassment. So who of you has ever been embarrassed by anything? I have. I can raise my hand for that. Today I want to tell you a story about a friend I had in high school. It was a snowy day. And while at school, our principal, Mr. Carlson, would let us run around the school barefoot in a race against him. It was a lot of fun, and it was something that we looked forward to every time there was enough snow a year that we could do this race. So after one of these races, it was in between classes, and we were goofing around, throwing snowballs at each other, and chasing each other in the snow because it's just a fun thing to do. Well, I had a friend chase me and we ran into the school and at CVA, there's a place where you go from the gym up into the school and to get there, there's kind of a steep hallway. Well, I was running up this steep hallway and my friend was chasing me and I turned the corner at the end of the hallway just in front of my friend. Well, my friend thought he could beat me, so he ran as fast as he could and he took that turn but when he took the turn, the snow on his shoes made him slip. And he slipped and he fell face first into the ground. Well, I heard this, so I turned around and I looked and there he was. And he was holding his mouth and he had little tears coming out of the corner of his eyes because he had just slammed his face into the ground. Well, what had happened was one of his front teeth had broken in half and he was holding half of his tooth in his hand. Well, his best friend and his brother were there when he fell. And he and his best friend and his brother decided that they weren't gonna tell his mom because his mom was gonna be mad at him. And then after she was done being mad, she was gonna probably laugh at him because it was a funny story. And my friend was worried about his mom being upset as well as his friends laughing at him because he was missing half of his tooth. So what they decided to do was they were going to somehow not tell mom and dad that his tooth had broken. Now, I don't know about you, but how many days do you think you could go without your parents noticing that you had part of a tooth missing? I didn't think this was a really good idea for my friend, but he went ahead and he did it anyway. So the next day at school, I waited for him to come in and to hear what had happened. What did his mom say? Did she laugh? Was everybody else at the school going to laugh? Well, it turned out that my friend wasn't able to hide the fact that his front tooth was broken from his mom for very long. But he came into school the next day and he had gone to the dentist and they had glued his tooth back together. So he didn't have to worry about being embarrassed. I wanted to tell you guys that story to remind you that there is somebody there who always will love you and who's never embarrassed by you. Do you know who that is? That person is Jesus. And just like my friend's mom maybe laughed a little bit, 
But then she found a way to help her son so that he wouldn't have to be embarrassed again. And I just wanted to remind you guys that God loves you and there's nothing you can ever do that will make him not love you or be embarrassed about you. All right, boys and girls, I hope you have a great Sabbath and we look forward to seeing you later. Bye. At this time, I'd like to share with you a few announcements. The church board will be meeting soon to make plans for what worship will look like when we begin having church in the building again. No decision about when we will start meeting in the church again has been made yet. It's that time of year when graduation comes. Please call the church to let us know if you have graduates in your family. Graduation looks a little different this year due to social distancing. You are invited to help Miles Shecker celebrate his eighth grade graduation during a drive-by celebration in front of his home next Sabbath on May 16th from 4 to 6 p.m. The address is in the church directory. Be creative, make signs, decorate your car, honk your horn. Please plan to stay in your car. There will be a basket you can drop cards into and we'll have cookies to hand out too. If you have any questions, contact Vanessa. Family Bible Adventure will be a virtual online experience this year and we hope that you and your families can join at home. Broken Arrow Ranch, unfortunately, is canceled for this summer but we look forward to holding camp again next summer in 2021. Prayer meeting is still on Thursdays. You can call in to join us in prayer. That number is 617-829-6816. Our church has joined with It Is Written to hold an online evangelistic event, Hope Awakens. The live presentations are presented by speaker John Bradshaw. This is online for people to watch in their homes on Fridays, Saturdays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays through May 16th. It's not too late to sign up. Please be praying for these meetings and share the link for it with family, coworkers, and friends. Mother's Day's gifts have been prepared by women's ministries for all the special women in our church family. These gifts will be available for pickup at the A Street entrance of the church this Sabbath afternoon, May 9th, between 2 and 4 p.m. Gifts and bags will be placed on tables outside the front door of the church. You will need to briefly exit your car to pick up the gifts. Feel free to take a few extras to share with friends and relatives. Please remember to maintain social distancing to protect everyone's health during pickup and delivery. After 4 p.m., any leftover gifts will be available at the welcome desk in the foyer. Have a blessed Mother's Day. Check out our website and Facebook for more details about events going on at Piedmont Park. This weekend, we remember and celebrate Mother's Day. To those who gave birth this year, to your first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience the loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we grieve with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with tears and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we are here for you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out yet in the way that you had longed for it to be. To those who step-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envisioned lavishing love on your grandchildren, Yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. 
to those who will have emptier nests this upcoming year. We grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we want to walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst. We, we remember, remember you. you. Our song of worship is Love at Home. is in his time.
Let us pray together. God, thank you for loving us as a father, but also as a mother, longing to gather your people together as a mother hen gathers her little ones under her wings. Be with those who need you right now. May they trust that you are near even if they can't feel it. When they are unable to see your footprints walking next to them, may they know it's because you carry them in your strong and capable arms. Anoint Pastor Michael's lips and speak through him today. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture this morning is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 34 through 35. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. I know when you see me on your TV or on your computer, you associate certain things with me. I'm sure you think of pastor or church or maybe the Bible. But some of you, you probably look at me on your screen and you begin to think of incredible feats of strength, right? Well, maybe not. I've never been mistaken for the strongest person around. But there are some people who have done amazing feats of strength, both today and in our history. Which makes me think, and maybe you've wondered this too, have you ever wondered about the strongest person in history? Have you ever wondered who the strongest human was? Well, different countries have different legends for their mighty warriors. The Greeks would talk about the legend of Hercules or Leonidas of Sparta, or Alexander the Great. People from the Far East, well, they might promote Genghis Khan as the strongest warrior ever. The Romans, they may say, no, that's not it. The strongest warrior ever would be Marcus Cassus Scavia, a Roman soldier who was rumored to have been shot in the eye by an arrow during a battle, he pulled the arrow out and kept fighting. Attila the Hun, he's regarded as one of Earth's strongest warriors. And you may not have heard of this one, Angus Maxigil from Canada. He stood at seven foot, nine inches tall, and he lifted a ship's anchor weighing 2,800 pounds. Of course, Bible readers would mention Samson in this conversation of the strongest human who defeated a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. More recently, men and women have performed amazing feats to prove their strength. From Japan, we had Minoru Yoshida, who holds the record for consecutive push-ups. Any guesses for how many push-ups he did? Take a guess, say it to the people around you, maybe. Maybe you're thinking, he did a, he did a thousand push-ups. Or maybe someone there guessed 2,000 push-ups. Well, friends, try 10,507 consecutive push-ups that this man did. But it's not just fellas that are strong. Diana Nyad was 64 years old when she swam nonstop from Cuba to Florida. That is for 110 miles that Diana did. What a feat of strength. Mayo Wedong holds the record for the longest plank exercise ever. You know, you're kind of in a half stands on a push-up. He did a plank and he held it. You know how long? He held that position for eight hours and one minute. Most people can barely get through a minute. And then when he got done... He did some push-ups just for good measure. Those are unreal, amazing feats of strength. But did you know that the strongest human ever is found in the Bible? And no, I'm not thinking of Samson this time. And as we think about this discussion of strong humans, we're, we're going to leave Jesus out of the equation just, just because. 
But who do you think? Who do you think is the strongest human ever? The answer might surprise you. When we read the Bible story, one human strength stands out from all the rest. One human given a job to do that would test the metal and strength of anyone. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open them to Luke chapter 1. That's where we're going to begin. Luke chapter 1, where we find the story of an angel, the angel Gabriel, appearing to a teenage girl. And listen to what he says, Luke chapter 1, in verse 30. The angel says, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of Of the highest. Mary is told that she will have a child and he will be called the Son of God. Can you imagine how this young girl felt in that moment? She very rightly can't understand how this is going to happen, and she tells Gabriel, Hang on a second, I'm, I'm still a virgin. And then he explains that this will be a miracle baby. He tells her that there will be no human father. Do we realize the task that Mary was given? She's going to have to convince Joseph that she's not been unfaithful to him when he discovers that she's pregnant. She's going to have to endure the pain and the ridicule and the shame from her village as they discover she's pregnant and will assume that she's been unfaithful to Joseph. With all of that that she has to do, listen to this teenage girl's response to God's task. Luke chapter 1, in verse 38, Mary says, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. She accepts to be a part of God's plan. God picked someone that I doubt we would have for this impossible task, a teenage girl. Praise the Lord that He sees what we cannot. Now, Mary wasn't perfect. The Bible never describes her as sinless or perfect. She's described as favored, not sinless. The key is that she was willing to be used of God, which should give us pause to ask, am I willing to be used by God as well? But the story is not over as we continue to look for the strongest human, and to find evidence of that. Jesus is born, and Joseph and Mary take Jesus to the temple for His dedication. And they meet the prophet Simeon, who confirms just how special this baby is. But listen to Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 34. Luke chapter 2, and verse 34. Then Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now, Mary is told that Jesus' future will be tumultuous, people rising and falling because of Him. And if that isn't scary enough, Simeon tells this young Mary, this new mom, that a sword will pierce through your very soul. At that haunting statement, did Mary give up? Did she bow out of this? Did she say, whoa, hold on there, old timer. I didn't sign up for that. Not at all. Mary does not back down. Her resolve is to continue to love this child to continue to follow God, come what may, which should again give us pause to ask ourselves, will we continue to trust God even in the hard times? At the end of Jesus' birth story, Luke says that Mary pondered everything in her heart. But we find Mary still pondering about Jesus 12 years later. And I think most moms can attest to doing plenty of pondering 
when it comes to their children. But I want you to watch what Mary has to ponder. Mary and Joseph take Jesus to Jerusalem for, to pa- for Passover when he's 12 years old. And they go and they experience Passover and then they leave and Jesus somehow gets left behind. They both assume that he's somewhere in the caravan. And after some days' journey, they can't find Jesus. Frantically, they return to Jerusalem. And can you imagine how they felt? Have you ever lost a child before? Even for a few seconds, it is a horrifying feeling. Now, imagine your child being lost for three days. And this child has been specially entrusted to you by God. And you know that this child is going to have enemies. Terror grips Joseph and Mary as they frantically search through Jerusalem until they find Jesus peacefully talking to the priests in the temple. And I bet all you moms out there can sympathize with Mary as she speaks with Jesus. In Luke chapter 2, verse 48, Mary says to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And Jesus replied, I have to be about my father's business. Again, Mary is reminded, Jesus is not just my son. He's God's son too. I wonder if she heard Simeon's words again, a sword through your heart. And Mary's pondering continues. Luke chapter 2, verse 51. Then he, that's Jesus, then he went down with them to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Did Mary think, was this the experience that Simeon was talking about? Maybe she thought, surely it can't be worse than this. This must have been the sword. But we know the story well. And Mary has not yet felt that sword in her soul. And we have not yet discovered the evidence that we need yet to determine who the strongest human is. But let me show you. For this, we have to turn to John's gospel. For John shows us something at the terrible scene of the crucifixion that the other gospel writers leave out. But this story will help us discover the strongest human. Jesus has been arrested. He's been beaten. He's been whipped. Blood seeps from His wounds. His face is a crimson mask from the blood dripping from the crown of thorns. It's a horrific scene that each gospel writer shows, but John adds another dimension to this. Tells us something that the others leave out. John tells us that Jesus' mother is there. Mary is watching it all. Now, Mary plays a small role in the gospel story, really, as Jesus becomes the center point, and of course, He should be. He is the focus. But here, John wants us to see Mary at the foot of the cross. On this Mother's Day weekend, when we celebrate and honor the love and the sacrifice of all mothers, the Bible gives us this picture of Jesus' mother. The fact that Mary is there reveals even more about Jesus' commitment to save you and me. Jesus knows what it's like to have a mother, to love a mother, someone who has always been there supporting Him, someone who has always loved Him unconditionally. Now imagine this. Picture this in your mind. Your mother crying, weeping, and and not just a few tears falling. No, picture your mom crying, heart-wracking sobs of pain, and you see it, and you can stop it. Can you imagine that? You can put an end to the situation that's making your mom cry. Would you be tempted to do it? to stop whatever it is that's making your mom hurt? I know I would. 
I cannot stand to see my mother cry. What a temptation for any person. And Jesus sees Mary. He sees her pain. He sees her grief. And He knows that even though I could stop it, I must not. So Jesus does the only thing He can do. And John records this in John chapter 19, verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw His mother and the disciple whom He loved standing by, we believe that to be John, He said to His mother, Woman, behold your son. And then He said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Jesus gives John charge to take care of Mary. Mary, who must have already lost Joseph, and now she must lose her son. The sword that Simeon spoke of so long ago is now cutting through Mary. I visited Rome a few years ago. I saw lots of artwork, lots of statues, saw plenty of paintings and statues of Jesus and about the church and, of course, about Mary. But this statue of Mary really struck me. It's a depiction of a young Mary holding Jesus after His death. And of course, it's not a literal depiction, but the artist was depicting the commitment that Mary had to have to continue to follow Jesus, even after she is told in the prophecy that a sword will someday cut her soul. This artist's statue. It portrays the strength of a young teenage girl to continue to choose to follow God's plan. So, back to our original question, who is the strongest human? Well, I propose to you that it just might be Mary. Pastor Caitlin shared an idea with us last Christmas, something I'd never thought of before. Mary went through and lived what even Father Abraham didn't have to endure. In the book of Genesis, God asks Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. And Abraham chooses. He decides to trust God even when he doesn't understand. And he takes Isaac. And he lifts the knife above his son. But at the last moment, an angel shouts out, Abraham, Abraham, and stops the horrible event. And God provides a ram in the place of Isaac for the sacrifice. The whole scene was to show that God would provide a way to save sinners. But now, years later, here we stand at Calvary and we find God's way. God's way to save sinners is Jesus' death, Mary's boy. But Abraham, even the great Abraham, was spared having to lose his son, not Mary. Mary must endure losing her boy, her son who was perfect, her son who was her hope. Mary endured seeing Him bleed, seeing Him mocked and ridiculed. She heard Him cry out, My God, why have you forsaken me? As the sword cut through her heart, Mary endured what no other human ever has. When her perfect Son, her promised Son, the one who was more to her, the one who was more than just her son, he was God's son. Mary had to have the unreal strength given to her by God above to experience and endure Jesus' last breath. And then she had to bury her hope, her joy, her son. My friends, strength is not just in arms 
and in muscles. It's not just bravery in the face of our own death. True strength comes from the inside, and it is given by God. It comes from a connection with God that allows us to do the unthinkable, to endure even the most cruel hardships. Are you needing some strength today? Are you needing some strength from God today? My friend, God is willing to give you what you need to endure and to press on no matter what test you may be facing, just like He did for Mary. And my friends, moms truly are some of the strongest things that God ever made. Moms, we honor you this weekend. We thank you this weekend for your love, for your strength, and for your sacrifice. Now, the Bible writers, they don't show us all the scenes, and I wish they would, but but they didn't. They didn't show us this one scene, the scene of of a resurrected Jesus meeting His mom again. Can you imagine that? As Jesus spreads out His arms, as He's brought back to life, and He's living and He's breathing, He spreads His arms to embrace Mary. The one human who endured a loss like no other human was asked to. It would be an amazing scene to witness, but even better than that scene, How cool, how awesome, how amazing will it be on that future resurrection morning that will happen someday when Jesus returns to our earth and resurrects all His followers, and He resurrects Mary. And the angels will bring Mary before her Creator, her Son. And my guess is that she, like all of us, will bow down before Jesus, the King of the universe, our one and only Savior. And as she bows, I wonder if she'll look up and notice nail-scarred feet in front of her and feel nail-scarred hands that will embrace her as the King hugs his mom. And he says, Welcome home, Mary. What a day that will be when we're all together again. And I'm sure that we will thank all the Bible characters for the part that they played in the story. We'll thank Paul and Peter, Moses and David, but I hope we won't forget to thank Mary for accepting the amazing strength that she had from God and for doing the impossible task that God asked her to do and helped her to do. And of all the wonderful resurrection day events that are going to happen, that day is made possible only by the love of God that is manifested in Mary's Son, Jesus, Savior of the world, Savior of you and me, Savior of an amazingly strong human, his mom. It's time for our song of dedication. If you feel like it, would you stand? The love of God.
Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, our gracious Lord Jesus, and blessed Holy Spirit, we thank You so much for Your love, which is more than we can comprehend, more than we can understand, more than we can grasp. And yet You've told it to us. You've promised it to us, Lord, and You've shown it to us in Your love for each of us, but also in Your love for Your mom, Mary. Thank You for giving her as an example, Lord. Thank You for the strength that she had to do what You asked her to do. And Lord, thank You for giving us the strength that You ask us to do in following You and serving You too. Bless us this day and this weekend. We ask that you will bless all the mothers amongst us, even those with mothers' hearts. And Lead us, Lord. Lead us ever onward and help us to follow wherever you lead. In Jesus' name we pray. And all those who accept the love of God today said, Amen. God bless you. Have a happy Sabbath, a happy Mother's Day, and a blessed and safe week.